Let's say you want to start manufacturing semiconductor chips. The first thing you need is about $10 billion. While this may sound a bit capital intensive, you don't have to worry because this industry is fairly profitable with a profit margin of about 10%. The semiconductor industry plays a very important role in the production of microchips that are used in communication devices, radios, televisions, medical equipment, as well as video games. But there is a catch. Your entire semiconductor plant may be completely useless and obsolete in about five years. Why? Because technology is changing fast, and so is the demand for more efficient chips. The facility has to run 24-7 because your foundry must produce hundreds of millions of semiconductors each year, so you can sell them at high premiums to justify its high operating costs. For these reasons, and many more, the number of semiconductor companies has dropped from 25 competitors, at the peak of microchip technology in the year 2000, to only three in the world today, which are Intel, Samsung, and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, which is also known as TSMC which is the world's most valuable semiconductor company. It is so powerful that Intel, which for years dominated the microchip market, has relegated part of its operation and outsourced production to TSMC. So how did Taiwan become the largest producer of semiconductor chips? Why do companies such as Apple, Nvidia, and AMD get semiconductors from Taiwan and what it means for its complicated relationship with China? In this video, we explore how Taiwan built a $600 billion monopoly. Welcome to another project. It is most likely if you have a smartphone, you have something made by TSMC. Why is semiconductor important or interesting? Because it changes your life. Taiwan was Japan's first colony. Its intentions were to turn Taiwan into a model colony. However, this changed when Japan surrendered during World War II, which meant that Taiwan became a territory of the Republic of China soon after. After the conflict between China and Japan, a severe economic recession followed which left a trail of destruction throughout the country. By 1970, Taiwan ranked among the world's least developed countries in terms of its GDP per capita and level of human development. During this time, most Taiwanese lived in absolute poverty, with 60% of the population were poor farmers trying to make ends meet. However, in the 1980s, Taiwan moved to capital-intensive and knowledge-based industries. Due to rising labor productivity, privatization, government planning and considerable foreign trade and investment, Taiwan's economy was propelled through rapid economic expansion. Companies subsequently moved to manufacturing semiconductors and electronic equipment, including radios, television sets, and computers, and by the mid-1980s, Taiwan had become one of the world's largest producers of computers and computer peripherals. In 1985, Morris Chang, who had completed his doctorate in electrical engineering from MIT and Stanford, was recruited by the Taiwanese government to help develop the emerging semiconductor industry. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company was officially formed in 1987 as a joint venture between the Taiwanese government owning 21%, and Dutch multinational electronics giant, Philips, owning 28%, with the rest owned by private investors with an interest in semiconductor technology. TSMC managed to increase its manufacturing capacity to keep up with the high demand for their silicon wafers from all around the world and by 1993, TSMC became the first Taiwanese company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Today, TSMC is the only company to make 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer chips, which are used by Apple for their A14 and M1 chips. This has made it the world's most valuable semiconductor company, with a market cap of 600 billion, more than 11,000 products, and 600 different customers. But is the world too dependent on Taiwan? Before we continue, please consider subscribing and hitting like on this video. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. Taiwan is the go-to producer of chips for artificial intelligence, high-performance computing, and smartphones. For this reason, Taiwan's role in the global economy cannot be overlooked. Close to half of the chips used by global electronics manufacturers are produced or packaged in Taiwan. TSMC has reached an unparalleled level of dominance. A good example of this is how a drought that hit Taiwan between 2020 and 2021 brought entire companies to a standstill. Big automakers such as Volkswagen, 
Ford Motors and Toyota were forced to halt production due to the fact that Taiwan did not have enough water to make semiconductors at the same pace as before. Remember, these chips are used for parking sensors and navigation among other things. We have an entire video on this that you can watch by clicking the top right corner. Taiwan has become a major player in the global stage with its chip-making skills giving it political and economic leverage. This has pulled Taiwan into the never-ending trade war between China and the US due to the fact that Taiwan is not really considered a country but majority of the countries around the world. China actually considers Taiwan one of its provinces just with its own autonomy, making Taiwan a very ambiguous state. For this reason, if China was ever to invade Taiwan, which could lead to a war, the collapse of a lot of tech companies would be completely inevitable. Huawei, which was once China's leading smartphone maker, had an epic downfall after Trump's administration banned access to all U.S. chip technology from being used by China. This is because some of the chips made in Taiwan are used by the United States military for some of its paraphernalia. The United States saw this as a threat to national security. And for this reason, TSMC stopped supplying Huawei with chips. And the company has been on decline ever since. But what are countries doing to reduce their dependency on Taiwan? The United States recently passed Chips for America Act, which aims to inject $52 billion to ramp up America's ability to manufacture semiconductor chips. The U.S. is the biggest player in global technological advancement. But all that is under existential threat because it does not produce enough of its own chips. China on the other hand wants to be steps ahead because it wants to assert its dominance as a technological superpower and has invested about $180 billion into this technology. China aims to achieve 70% self-sufficiency in high-tech industries, and by 2049, which is the 100th anniversary of the People's Republic of China, it wants to attain a dominant position in the global market. The European Union on the other hand, aims to boost Europe's share of the global chip market to 20% from less than 10% it has today. It plans on investing $36 billion through a public-private partnership. That's all we have today, please let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching, till next time. Here are more videos we think you will enjoy.